I got mail, a postcard, from Bruce in Toronto. Dear Richard, thank you for highlighting your bookstore visit to St. Catharines, this is in Ontario, in one of your videos. My wife and I went to the right bookshop yesterday and left with a box of books. I had some great SF finds, Gibson, Sterling, and Ellison. I read The Demolished Man earlier this year on a vacation, and I enjoyed it a great deal. The power of the super rich felt prophetic for our times. I'm finding a lot of gems in 1950s SF over the past few years. Keep reading. And he also says to enjoy the Eclipse stamp. Let me show that to you. Thanks a lot, Bruce. And now to our main feature, Flashback by Dan Simmons, 2011. This was a gift from Joe Brooks, a viewer. Joe Brooks has started his own channel and I'll put a link to it in the description to this video. He also has a written review of this book. I haven't read it because I wanted to read it first for my own impressions. And then later in this video, we'll take a look at what Joe has written. You might recognize the name Dan Simmons. He is well known in the SF community for the Hyperion Cantos. Hyperion from 1989. Hyperion often appears on BookTuber's top 10 lists. Its sequel in 1990, The Fall of Hyperion. Endymion, 1996. The Rise of Endymion, 1997. Dan Simmons is still with us. He was born April 4th, 1948. He's now 76 years old. He's a jack of all trades when it comes to best-selling fiction. He's written horror novels crime novels, fantasy novels, historical novels, and science fiction. Flashback appears after a trio of historical novels, The Terror from 2007, Drood from 2009, and Black Hills from 2010. Flashback is a dystopian novel. This novel is written in 2011 and its events are from 2030. So part of the novel is how did we get there from here. And we are at the halfway point now in 2024 as I record this. Another facet of the novel is a father-son relationship, actually a grandfather, father, and son's relationship. Then we have a murder mystery. And finally, political intrigue as we discover how this world came to be, how it really came to be. Flashback is a drug that allows us users to re-experience moments of their lives. With the precipitous fall of United States, much of the country is using flashback to remember the good times. The fall of United States? Well, this novel was published in 2011, so Dan Simmons must have been writing it in 2009 and 2010. Three events really affected his horrific future. 9-11, the 2008 financial crisis, and the election of Barack Obama. Simmons imagines a United States which allowed its enemies, through appeasement, to populate the United States and continue a form of domestic terrorism. The socialization of the government continues the downfall, and eventually, the United States is fractured. With a weakened United States, Israel is wiped off the face of the map by three nuclear bombs. Refugees to the United States are housed in a large camp in Denver. The Muslim Caliphate has spread through much of Asia, Europe, and Africa through immigration and terrorism. In China, there is a raging civil war. And in Japan, we have corporations and Yakuza and shoguns merging in a way that is political. From California to Denver is ruled by the Japanese. In southern United States, the Mexican cartels have taken over. Texas is still a free state of its own. And we don't hear too much about what's going on in the eastern United States. Canada, as a socialist state, has been run over by the Muslim Caliphate. The enemy within and the enemy without have created this dystopian future. This novel has what I like to call a braided plot. We have three storylines alternating and eventually coming together. The A story follows a father, Nick Bottom, who was a former detective in Denver. The death of his wife has haunted him, and he is a flashback addict, seeking to spend time with his wife. He has lost his son. His son has now moved out to live with his grandfather in Los Angeles. 
His son is 16 and in the B plot line has joined up with a gang of youth. They are a flashback gang. They seek juvenile crime and relive it using flashback. This crime is getting more and more serious. And the grandfather is a former professor doing his best to raise the grandson in absence of the father. His daughter was married to Nick Bottom. She is the one who is deceased. Nick Bottom is brought before a powerful Japanese overlord. This overlord's son had been murdered five years ago and Nick Bottom had been part of the investigation. Those responsible were not found and Nick's wife had died and he had left the force. Many different investigations have happened, but no one has found the murderer. The Japanese overlord contracts him or forces him to look at the murder one more time. He's to team up with the overlord's head of security, Sato. He is a giant man, almost the size of a sumo wrestler, but with the skills of a mercenary and a ninja. As Nick reinvestigates this murder, he finds somehow that his wife's death is connected. Meanwhile, in Los Angeles, his son is in big trouble. Their gang has gone too far in trying to assassinate a Japanese overlord. They were thinking that it would be great to relive this over and over in flashback, but everything goes wrong. The grandfather and the son find their way out of LA into a Mad Max style journey across the deserts of the Southwest, seeking to get to Denver. Meanwhile, Nick's investigation furthers and he discovers some horrifying secrets. He hears about his son and tries to find a way to connect with the grandfather and son. Dan Simmons' plotting skills are evident and the braided storylines come together beautifully. There are many unexpected moments, but there's also a lot of emotional moments. So what did I think of this novel? This novel has some controversy over its projected future. Thank goodness that future doesn't seem to be happening, but the paranoia, the political paranoia is very evident in his projections. Nick explains to Sato what has happened to the country. I was born into a nation and society that had only known greater wealth, greater prosperity, and all sorts of what we thought of as progress in the life of every citizen, except the oldest farts who remembered the first Great Depression. My old man's generation couldn't even imagine things getting worse. So when they and we had the money, we spent it. And after we didn't have the money any longer, we still spent it. Do you speak of individuals, bottom son, or your government? Yeah, said Nick, both. Remember, I was just coming of age when we had the first sort of financial meltdown and unemployment mini quakes. We thought it was the big one, having no clue that the problems were just early tremors of something much worse. And the president we elected right then made it all worse. No, we all did. By passing those staggering entitlement programs that he knew, we all knew in our guts that we couldn't begin to pay for. But Europe had such entitlement programs for generations, said Sato. And Titterman. Except for the pronunciation, Nick thought, the massive security chief was beginning to sound like a college prof trying to keep a dull conversation going with even duller students. Nick laughed. Yeah, and look where that got them. For some, this is too much. In writing a very near-future dystopian, it has quickly become out of date, at least in terms of projection. But I don't read science fiction to try to see how accurate predictions are. I want to see what the story is about and what the author is talking about in themes. The grandfather is a retired academic, and over and over again, we have info dumps about political decisions in the United States. The last two paragraphs of the novel actually continue to hit you over the head with Dan Simmons' thesis for this political conundrum. The story is also about violence and racism, and there's a lot of objectionable conduct and language in here. Once again, though, the author is building a dystopian future, a future which becomes an allegory, extrapolating from the political times just before it was written. While I do think it's extreme, I found the setting very interesting for the story that was told. This, to me, is where the novel shines. The plotting is strong and satisfying, and the last couple chapters really threw me for a loop. So I don't think this novel's for everyone. If you can't get past the political extrapolation and the portrayal of cultures and violence, then this one's not for you. But if you can look at it as a setting, a background to an amazing crime story, a story of corporations, of mafia, of fathers and sons, 
of mercenaries, futuristic warfare, and terrorism, you might actually enjoy this. It was over 500 pages, but it read like a bestseller. So for this controversial story, I found the plot satisfying, but I found the political extrapolation too much. So I give it 7.5 out of 10. So let's take a look at what Joe has to say. On his community page at Science Fiction Retroactivist, he talks about this not being his usual SF fare. He thinks it's one of those classic science fiction cautionary tales. In his community post, he says, The novel blames this, the fall of the United States, on decades of U.S. political drift, ignorance of the Constitution, poor national economic decisions, and deliberate influence on the former by foreign interests, among other things. Further down, I read the book while rereading A. E. Van Vogt's 1945 SF novel, The World of Null A., and Orwell's appendix to 1984. These classic SF novels both stress the importance of semantics, the meaning of words, written history, the time-binding to lessons learned from the past, sensible morals, ideologies, economics, and Null A adds philosophy as a comparison and contrast. He goes on to provide evidence in the novel of what Simmons is trying to do here. He details some of the political discussion in the novel about the fall of the United States and the feudal Japanese overlords. At one point, the novel also brings up Winston Churchill, the defeat of his government, the downfall of the British Empire, and Churchill's opinion on political ideologies. Part of Joe's conclusion says, The novel certainly appears to be a cautionary tale suggesting keep the better days to begin with and not use drugs to feel alive. I'm very curious. Have you read Dan Simmons' flashback? What are your thoughts? And regarding controversial novels, where do you draw the line in what you read? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, keep reading.